So people will tell you that the Pope resigned because of old age. That is not the case. The Pope resigned because he didn't know who the greatest superhero of all time is because we haven't figured it out yet. Oh, well, we're sorry about that, but you know, we'll try and uh, figure out who the greatest superhero is of all time for the next Pope. So we're gonna jump right into it this week. This is yeah. the last episode. Ah, it we've is almost done. It. Very exciting. <laughs> and uh, the next round is gonna be completely different, and we're and so just... excited to show that to you. We're gonna start today with Green Arrow versus Hellboy. Why don't you tell me what's good about Green Arrow? I tell you what's good about Green Arrow. I'll tell you what's not good. His show. Oh, abysmal. But that aside, <laughs> some people like it. I know. I, I don't, don't like it. Maybe I need to give it another chance, but so, we're, we're, we're sidetracked. Um, so Green Arrow, a lot of people call him a bit of a Batman clone uh, with a bow and arrow. He's just a kind of cross between Batman and Robin Hood. Mm. I disagree. I disagree. Yes, he uses a bit of ye olden technology, which kind of seems outdated, but he makes it cool. You know, he's got all the different types of... Uh, uh, arrowheads on it, you know, to spice up his arsenal a bit. Um, oh, <laughs> made myself laugh <laughs> with rude innuendo. No, I always thought it was an Arsenal reference to his former sidekick. Wasn't at all. No, I, that would have been much better. It would have, but now I just have a dirty <laughs> sounding mind. Um, but besides that, spice up his arsenal. <laughs> Put that aside, uh, beside him spicing up his arsenal. Stop saying it. I don't know what it means. <laughs> it just sounds wrong. <laughs> so he spices up his arsenal. What? <laughs> but he fights social injustice. Yeah. And that's the main thing Green Arrow does. He will take on corporate crime and he will also do it without the mercy of Batman. He will go at it full on. If you done bad and you don't do good, he'll, he'll kill a fool. He will kill a fool. Why don't you tell me a bit about Hellboy? Hellboy. <laughs> and he's a guy who likes to spice up other people's arsenals. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Hellboy is a demon that um, was summoned in a sort of uh, ritual-esque way by Nazis. That old chestnut. Uh, um, the Nazis. He's, he's summoned to the human world and he is... The whole myth mythos is that he can't ever leave the human world uh, as soon as he tastes human food and he eats pancakes. And that, that was the first food he tasted and then he was bound to the human world. Then he's Fair. employed by this kind of government agency mm -hmm. uh, to go after the weird and the unexplained. Um, and that's kind of, that's his thing. He also has this kind of big arm, which I believe, and I'm paraphrasing. I I'm, paraphrasing I'm paraphrasing Wikipedia normally means here. I don't actually know. Uh, it has some sort of mythical dragon in it. It's like a home for some sort of mystical dragon power thing. There are going to be some comments on this video. Look, okay, I read the Wikipedia article. Who knows? Anyway. Um, <laughs> At least you're honest about it, to be fair. What I do think is cool about Hellboy is that the, his aesthetic. Rather Very jokingly... Cool in the last time we talked about Hellboy, I was like, he's red. And we were like, oh yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> that's funny because it sounds stupid, but really, when you think of Hellboy, you think of stark contrasts in the art. You think mm. of that really cool dark red. You think of the sort of badass look. You think of the style of him. And I think that's why a lot of people like his character. He is one of the very few non-Marvel and non-DC characters that people actually know. And whether that's because of the films or whether because he's the kind of poster child for Dark Horse comics, I'm not sure. Uh, probably the films. But, you know, and he, he's, he's not that old either. Like, he, really he hasn't been around for that long. 90s? 20 years or so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not that long in comic book terms, is it? No, not um, really. But he's gained a lot of kind of traction and popularity in that time. He has. With that being said, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Green Arrow, and I love what they're doing with him at the moment. I, I love that he's constantly changed. Like, he's been the kind of... Um, the Robin Hood aesthetic with the pointy beard and the, all the rest of it. 
But we're not going back to that. That's not why I like him. Um, but you know, he has those characteristics, and now he's 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 more of a, a young man uh, who's inherited all this money, and he's he's trying to do good with it and things like that. And I think that's a really cool characteristic. Yeah, and I agree. Green Arrow's better. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Next pair. There are going to be people watching this video claiming sabotage. To you people, I say, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want sabotage, <laughs> wait for the next pairing. <laughs> This is not easy, right? Sometimes it's a character that you just don't know that well, all right? There's only so much Google can I, I, I like the way he shaves his horns. You, sir, are shocking. <laughs> Moving on. So now we have Beast and we have Cyclops. I yeah. will let you go first with Cyclops. Listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go the whole shebang because it would be unfair to, I think. Ooh, everyone, talk. everyone big knows. Talk, sir. Everyone on this show knows I love Cy. In fact, it's it's almost a tie. But in fact, it's not a tie anymore. But it's all. It's, it was almost a tie between Damian Wayne and Cyclops for who was my favorite character. And it hasn't always been that way. This is sort of last three years time. Mm. And I don't think anyone can deny that in the last three years, Cyclops has shone. He is basically Marvel at the moment. Like. Everything they're doing with the Avengers, the Uncanny Avengers, uh, all the numerous X-Men books, mm -hmm. it all revolves around Cyclops. It all revol revolves around his ideology. And not only is, it, is that exciting, but it's exciting that we have the sort of reflection and the homage to what has come before. But as we've seen in recent events maybe we haven't maybe cyclops has taken it too far and i think what they've created in cyclops one of the many things they've created is a character that you can get behind in an ideological sense and have that say something about you as a person mm. this character is so real he is his problems the thing he's dealing with you get you get the conflict and you get his decisions based on the conflict, even if you don't agree with them. I love Cyclops. He loves Cyclops. How does Beast compare to that? I'll tell, I'll tell you how Beast compares. Hank McCoy. A lot of people would dismiss him straight away. A lot of people would be like, oh, he's, one of, he's, he's the bottom rung of the X-Men, you know? Uh, yeah, he's been there since the start, but he's not the popular one. I'll tell you what Beast is. I'll, I'll tell you what Beast is tell right now. Beast is. He is the backbone of the mm -hmm. X-Men. He is the guy who you're always like, uh, you know, X-Men is Wolverine and Cyclops and, you know, even people like Gambit before Beast. But at the end of the day, if Beast's not there, you realise. And you realise what he brought to the table. Mm. He, he has, in all seriousness, like, I, I get the feeling I know which way this is going to go. But in all seriousness, I do think Beast really has given an element to the X-Men, uh, out of all the members of the X-Men, his mutation, still today, is the most troublesome for any of them. And the reason why it's so troublesome is because he tried to, uh, you know, be normal. And it was almost this tale of, well, you know, if you strive for normality, you're going to end up this, you know, you're going to end up being a freak and really step in, outside your comfort zone, um, which I think is, is a great characteristic and, you know, He's, he's the genius of the X-Men. He's, you know, he's the scientist, always working away. Um, but he's, he, you know, in a fight, he's also very useful. Um, I just think as a character, he's very underrated for what he does. And I think what he does, he does very well. No, I, I agree. I agree. I'm a, I'm a big Beast well, fan. Well, you're an X-Men fan. Like, you love the X-Men family. I'm a family. big Beast fan. I, I love Beast. I think he is, he is a great character. I think, you know, you're right. I think we would miss him. He's like sort of what I like to imagine what my presence is at a party that I'm not at. <laughs> Everyone's just sort of sitting around like something, something's off. Oh yeah, Dan isn't here. God, what a what a downer! And then the party. Everyone shots. <laughs> <Yeah. Hey. laughs> but no, no, I no, I agree. But Beast is really cool. And that what's great shot. about Beast is he went from kind of being ridiculous, like Stan Lee just sort of getting a th thesaurus out and just putting in a load of big no. words into his speech bubbles, to actually a really interesting character that is responsible for a lot of great X Men arcs and yeah. is again a completely realistic character with real world problems. That's what's great about the X Men. In general, I'm a big X-Men fan. But yeah, and as as that 
kind of goes. You are the X-Men guy. I enjoy the X-Men. Nowhere near to the extent as you. I'm, I think purely for the six, seven different books that you're currently buying of X-Men titles, I'm quite happy to leave this decision to you and I don't I mean, think it's do, a hard one. Do, do you agree is Cyclops I do character? think Cyclops is an incredibly interesting character in the last few years. I think beforehand, I think he's kind of boring, but in the last few years, we'll get into, that. We'll get into that next time because Cyclops goes through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. I start getting into cut him off. <laughs> well, no, no, I've got a lot to say on that. Yeah. I've got a lot to say on that. And speaking <laughs> of a lot to say on that, there's going to be a lot more people to say things there on. There is. <gasps> so uh, we are now through to the round of 16. Right? We're getting there. We're getting there. Which yeah. is not the quarterfinals. It's the round of 16. And Which is a finals of some variety. Yeah. The, the eighth finals. I'd... Which doesn't really work. The round of 16. And uh, we're going to get two of our friends and fellow comic book show makers to come and sit with us. We're going to have a round table. That's we're going to hash some stuff out. Yep. And it's going to be exciting. There might even be alcohol. Not for you. That technology isn't around hey, yet. Hey, but if you, if you want to get a drink... If you want to get a drink, yeah. watch along with us, get exactly. drunk along with exactly. us. Exactly. Lovely. Oh, yes, please be over 18 if you are going to. <laughs> or 21 if you're in the States. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. <laughs> um, so, lovely. Good. Okay. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. It's at Comic Book Show One for any and all updates. Indeed, indeed. Also, if you still want to donate to my Red Nose Day thing, you want uh, Dan to make me look like a complete idiot shaving my head like Quentin Quire. Mm, it Quentin is Quire. Quentin Quire. Yeah. It is uh, justgiving.com forward slash Quentin Hey, I don't know if you know this, but we only get to talk about a select few books on this it's show true. every it's week. True. And I actually, on my website, casualrobot.com, talk about yeah. them all, or at least all the ones I pick up. Uh, and I give reviews on them all, so if you've missed something, you're not sure where to pick it up, casualrobot.com for a rundown of all of this week's books. Um, lovely. Good. Well, thanks for watching this week. Uh, make sure you tune in next week, and we'll see you then. Beside him spicing up his arsenal. Stop saying it. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs>